Hello everybody. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the Health Show. This is the episode 37th of the Health Show. I'm super excited tonight because tonight I'm going to have Sikandar Bazenjo on board with me. He's an amazing guy. He's he's done so many things that I'm just in awe. I'm really actually inspired from him. And before starting about him, I would like to ask him himself. Thank you so much for coming and welcome aboard Sikandar. How are you? Thank you for having me, Asad. I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing great. Um so before you know I start talking about you and you know all about that you do and all about that inspires me and so many people out there let me ask you so tell me about this who is Sikandar Bazenjo what's your story what are you all about that's a very difficult first question asad <laughs> <laughs> um so Sikandar Bazenjo is a very simple guy he was born and raised in Balochistan um till grade 7 i moved to karachi um when i was in 7th grade um i don't know there's not much to tell um i'm a friendly guy i would say i'm sort of um in the middle of an extrovert and introvert so there are times where um i would like to be alone but there are times where i am i'm super social as well um and someone who has seen a lot of things in this short span of life um i guess that the, those things along the journey have sort of shaped my personality um to do things which i'm doing and to be inspired from so many other people as well great great thank you so much for sharing that sikandar so tell me about this what inspires you more more importantly what inspires you to get up every day and do all these kind of things that you do all that social welfare you know welfare work um you know inspiring people leading people you know helping people all of that what inspires you so what inspires me in general is my faith in humanity and what inspires me to do the things which i'm currently doing apart from my work is that realization that with my small efforts a bit of very tiny efforts i would say um there's a massive difference in someone else's life um for instance for me for me for me and my team it might not be a lot of um trouble in coordinating donations and maybe sending it out to balochistan but for someone getting a monthly ration bag which they were not going to get otherwise um for them it's a massive difference so for me it's always that um i i'm one of those people who believe that you have to take the step first and if you fail then you can sort of um figure out who else is there to help you but first you have to start something um so i this is how i uh, function this is what i believe in great great um so can you tell us about you know all your experiences you know with starting with government of pakistan you were the ex ra to the chief economist of pakistan um you've been awarded as the goodwill ambassador um you've been to monash university and global shippers karachi as well tell us everything about that and also about east anglia uk okay um so i guess it all started um when i went to monash um that my journey outside Balochistan and Karachi started so I had only been to Balochistan and Karachi before and when I was going for my bachelor's there was the first time I was ever in a flight ever and that was to Malaysia and Monash and I guess that sort of opened my eyes that there is a different world than we are um than we can ever imagine there are different people there are different languages so I was surprised to hear people speaking in English speaking in um Mandarin speaking in Malay language um I don't know we, we I could never comprehend this thing um for me my mother tongue is always balochi even when I came to Karachi hearing people speak urdu was very weird for me because it's <laughs> something I've always seen on tv I'm like do you guys speak this language at your home with your parents as well it was quite surprising for me and seeing a world outside pakistan I guess it sort of um just put this put me on this path that um I have seen ground masses I have lived with them I realize the challenges and I've seen the world that is out there maybe I can work to work out some ways or try my best to bridge this gap um per se from these extremes from my village nal to maybe Denmark where I was for exchange to bridge these gaps wow that's great and and so Uh, tell us about your experience with government pakistan so you were the xra to chief economist what was the whole experience about and what learnings did you develop um so i used to be the coordinator of alif alan alif alan is the largest educational campaign in pakistan so i was a coordinator in karachi and education has been my, my passion all the way so even um, when i was in the uk doing my masters my thesis was on education in pakistan this is something that has always uh, been very close to my heart because 
I believe what I am today is only because of education and mainly because of education, of course, my parents. Um, so I always believed very strongly on education. I thought if I had the same opportunities, if someone else could get it, they would be in my place or even far better. We never, we never know. Um, so I was part of Alif Alam for like a year, year and a half. And then I applied for um, this fellowship that I found out, which was happening at the Ministry of Planning. And Ministry of Planning being the hub of development or development work across the country, not just federal or provinces, across the country and everywhere. And I, I have a degree in development economics, so I've always been fascinated about how these development um, bodies within the government works, what kind of things they look for. For instance, if SIN um, asked for a budget, what does federal look into these things? So I've always been curious about these, how these budget functions, how the government machineries function. And I was lucky that I got this opportunity. I was selected, um, I think, out of 15,000 people, and there were 40 wow. um, candidates that were selected. So I think I was very lucky to be selected among those amazing cohort. Um, and when we went to the Ministry of Planning, it's a huge portfolio. They have education, social sector, research and development, employment, so on and so forth. Um, they asked us, what is your area that you want to be associated? And of course, I'm an economist, so I straight went for the chief economist. Okay, mujhe in ki office mein. Um, if I get that, any position, any sort of work, I would be lucky. And I was very lucky that the supervisor, the chief economist himself, Dr. Nadim Jawe, he was such a brilliant man. He was a doctorate uh, in economics from France. He had um, amazing research work and he was a very um, humble guy. He would always push you, um, take you along with IMF meetings, World Bank meetings, um, meetings with provinces. So I think overall it, it left me with a very brilliant experience that I could um, never imagine otherwise. Wow, this is this is beyond inspiration. So like, and and so it was all be before Global Shapers or was it during Global Shapers? It was before Global Shapers. So I joined Global Shapers when I went to Islamabad for this role. Oh, okay, 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 perfect. So tell us about that. Tell us about your journey of Global Shapers. How did you got in? What were your expectations? Yeah. What did you learn from Global Shapers and what is the way forward? Uh, so how I got to know about Global Shapers um, so I'm fascinated with the economy as well. I'm an economist, I'm a development economist. So I've always um, read the World Economic Forum ki jitne articles, the economist ki articles, the, and World Economic Forum closely when they do the data research. So I used to follow them a lot. And I used to be so curious if there's a way I can be associated with World Economic Forum anyway, even contribute as an intern or a volunteer. Then I figured out that a, a group of global shapers, ka, that's the youth initiator of the World Economic Forum. So I got really excited for that. And I realized when I went to um, Islamabad, I realized that there's a hub, it's hub in Islamabad. And I reached out to them. Uh, they told me that our recruitment period is after four months. Um, I told them, yeah, that's perfectly fine. So I applied for it. Um, so they selected four candidates. And uh, again, I was in the lucky four candidates um, to be part of the global ship in Islamabad. Um, lovely group, amazing bunch of um, change makers. Very, very inspiring. Each one of them has some amazing stories to say. So it's always inspiring to be around these people. And I was part of Slambada when I moved back to Karachi for my professional uh, uh, positions here. Um, I transferred to the Karachi app, which is a new hub. And currently I am the curator of Karachi app. So curators are elected for a one year term to lead the group and facilitate the group. Um, so Karachi is a new hub, um, less than one year old. So uh, we had a founding curator and when he finished, uh, I'm the second curator for this group. Wow, that is great. Um, so interestingly enough, um, you know, just like uh, two weeks ago, I had the curator of Islamabad Hub, Mubashir um, Sheikh Mashu, on the show as well. So, you know, that's something interesting. Um, so can you tell me about this? You know, you've had a lot of experiences in your life. What has been your life's biggest failure and what did you learn out of it? You know, that's a very, very difficult question. I so that we, we tend not to look for the weaknesses. Whenever there's an interview question, tell us about your weaknesses, what we never think about them. But for me, personally, I have taken out a lot of time uh, thinking about this thing. Kya mein failures rain hai? What is the weaknesses that I have? And I have not been ashamed of accepting those weaknesses and vulnerabilities. For me, this answer might sound very cliche to you. Um, but I don't think I have had such a failure that I'm thinking okay, every failure I've thought if there's a learning lesson for me um, even like obviously you will be disappointed with failures but even after a while you when you calm down when you're composed and I think if there's a learning lesson for me I don't consider it as a failure if I give you an example there's this fellowship that I've been applying 
सो यू ओनली हियर द गुड स्टफ यू डू नॉट हियर द बेड स्टफ यू डू नॉट हियर कि मैंने 500 जॉब्स के लिए अप्लाई किया तो देन मुझे शायद एक जॉब मिली हो देयर हैव बीन दोस थिंग्स इफ यू लुक एट माय ईमेल सेंट आइटम यू विल ओनली सी सीवीज बैक फ्रॉम 2010 एंड 9 सेंडिंग रैंडम सीवीज टू एवरीवन um so i am applying for this fellowship for last two years um this year they just finished the fellowship thing um they haven't selected me again uh, even after the interview um but it's perfectly fine i just think when i think about this fellowship when i think ki mai kyun select nahi hua i think we have a massive country uh, pakistan has a huge population there are incredible people um who are far more competent or relevant for this fellowship maybe if they are there they could bring a better change than myself um i'm just lucky ki at least one a chance mujhe diya to be interviewed and i hope to apply again next year so these are the this is how i i don't know this is how i associate failure um ke inse kuch seekhna hai that's it wow this is a beautiful perspective sikhender because it's it's about this every single setback every single thing that happens you need to understand that you know it's supposed to happen that way because that is something that made you be this way right now that you are right so that was all yes. you know that was meant to be yes so it's it's a yes. beautiful perspective um okay sekender so now the most exciting thing that you know people know about you um, and that's about you know how polo coelho uh, you know appreciated you guys such a wonderful thing obviously such a great thing for pakistan as well for balochistan most importantly um but more than that the thing the concept of wad library um if i'm pronouncing it right and um the reading rooms in balochistan that is i feel like a game changer like even you don't need any appreciation you don't need anything but i have a huge amount of respect for you for all the people who are doing this please tell me about this please tell me about this whole idea and how did it happen and you know what's the way forward so it started from when covid started um there are a couple of um youth who have, who have joined me this this banadi uh, there's yasir there khalid um selfless individuals we became part of the team we were brainstorming what can we do for covid during the covid um so we started very small we started providing rations to 40 families in quetta ki hum isse start karte hain when we realized ki we can do it uh, we can manage the operations we have the team we can manage to find volunteers because we have our own internal network we are from balochistan all four of us from different areas so we have our own network and then we have our friends and mutual friends through that network so we realized that we can do it um after that we started like simultaneously we were giving medical equipment to doctors and frontline staff so we are figuring out so so way these were um some of the areas where we could and um hum sari cheeze khud puri nahi khareed rahe the a lot of people were giving us in kind donation ki ye aap bhej dein kyunki you are already you have a footprint in balochistan we cannot go there just send these things there um during this time in the end um so banadi she is from what i am from nal uh, nal is a very tiny valley in the central balochistan so it's beautiful it's mountains um the valley is in the middle wow. um so i was going to go there for a flood relief drive right uh, um i i was speaking to banadi ke kuch mere paas books hain jo main khud donate karna chahta hu um i think we can um i'm going back to my village aapka bhi village raste mein aata hai what there is a library in what there is a new library in nal both were started by some of the young students themselves no support at all how could we donate our own books or kuch hum uh, donation ikattha karke kuch kitab mein leke we can just donate to them uh, this is how the lab- idea started so the idea was just to appreciate those guys ki aap log library kar rahe hain we are seeing you we are appreciating you we realize your rep- efforts that's it um just to go in the library and talk to them and this was the idea of um this entire thing so i went for the flood relief drive uh we did the whole um ration drive in the valley the world in couple of other areas which were completely um cut off from the mainland so we had to go um get a vigo put this stuff there and then um like go off roading to figure out kahan kahan mein ration dene ki zarurat hai so during that time we stopped by um to the nal library and to world library um when i came back obviously we put it on twitter appreciating those guys and sort of um seeing ki agar koi aur help kar sakta for a different library because we were being contacted so this is something you uh, i think it's um, worth pointing out that when the youth is involved um especially for balochistan um the community is very close they they even if they do not know you personally don't know you from a friend so they constantly reach out to you for every kind of help koi kehta hai ki mujhe is cheez ki zarurat hai koi kehta mera admission ruka hua hai so a lot of people constantly ask us um different advices and suggestions ki yaar ye bhi kar sakte hain aap log 
So a couple of them have asked us for the library books. And this is how the idea started. And once we donated, um, we put it on Twitter, appreciating those guys. So our local TV channel, Summer News, reached out to us, KR, uh, we want to do a story on this. Um, so we gave the story to them. I gave a phone number from what? Um, okay, up in safe bath karein. They have a library. If you want, you can have contact from Nal, uh, but it's totally up to you guys. I think a library coffee yogi just to get the idea across. Um, so they contacted what library they had the whole story published. Um, one question they asked me, ke, what kind of books they like? And I told them that you will be surprised to know um, that even in the villages, people have this thirst for knowledge. They love to study these, read these international authors like Paulo Colo and Elif Shafa. Wow. And uh, so this, this quote sort of got the attention of this um, massive guy and he tweeted <laughs> himself. Um, this sort of just blasted up. We weren't expecting this at all. I'm not we never even tagged that guy. He's like, Always can you imagine exactly. tagging? Can you imagine tagging Donald Trump or Barack Obama? Because there's no connection here. Exactly. Um, but somehow, somehow it reached. This is them. huge. This is beautiful. I mean, you know, the fact that it's happening, obviously, it gave you guys a lot of boost and a lot of motivation as well. Yeah. Yeah. So it not just gave us motivation. But gave us an entire roadmap that this is something we could do in a much sustainable way. Not just uh, one or two of donations, but we could even reach out to libraries. We can even um, help people construct new libraries as well. So we have been um, very lucky that we have been contacted by people from across the world out of this um, tweet. Even from um, US, Canada, UK, a lot of people have been asking us, we want to donate money. Karna chate. So we have told them that we are not accepting monetary contribution um, as yet. We are overwhelmed with the books. Trust me, I have written my whole launch. So even my parents are like, when will you take them? Where will you take them? So they constantly, donations are coming. We have collection centers, another collection center in Karachi. Um, I think at this point, um, our team and my team, Banari, Yasir, Khalid, the uh, global shapers are with us, Aarti, Falak, Ramzan, the responsibility of them is that we make sure that these book, books reach to the right and deserving people who have to read them in the real world. I know, um, being a book lover, I do know that how difficult to give their books. Exactly. And knowing that, not, not knowing that they will go where, that's the worst thing. I do not want that with my books. I do not want that with anyone's books. So this is our first priority. Not getting any monetary contributions, um, but figuring out how we will reach libraries. So we are working on the operations. We have had um, some contact with TCS, a couple of other organizations, that our books will reach to the resource centers and um, Quetta and Turpat, then we'll dispatch them from there. Wow, this is huge. I mean, so, uh, so this is one thing that I'm really concerned about because Pakistan mein library culture hai nahi, right? from the very start. We don't have that. And there's a dire yeah. need to build that all over Pakistan. But this is happening in Balochistan. is just inspiring for so many. Mashallah. My all support for you guys, any sort of thing, you know, I can give a slab bath for you guys all in. So, um, uh, so can you tell me about this, you know, having the experience of Global Shapers, you've been into Isaac as well. That's something that really touched me because I'm an Isaac, current serving Isaac as well. Um, tell me about this. How are you creating an impact? What do you think? I think, so there's a direct impact and there's an indirect impact. Direct impact is what you create on people, uh, which is the number of people you count, number of families you impacted. Um, number of doctors you're giving kids to. So that's the direct impact on them and on their family. I believe the indirect impact is even stronger. Indirect impact is to give books at future books. Um, the long term impact that he or she can get out of these books. Um, another impact, indirect impact would be someone looking at us in our team here in global recognition will rear by the efforts they are doing. Can't we do something like this? So just this thought coming to their mind and maybe in future. Um, they do something even bigger than this and better than this. So this is the indirect impact I think um, is very crucial to me personally. Wow, this is this is huge. Um, so tell me about this, Sikandar. Um, if you can share any insights that you've learned throughout your life about a better health, diet, and exercise. Uh, so this is something Asad I've been struggling. I would love some tips from you. <laughs> sure. Um, but um, yeah, diet, um, so I try my best personally that I'm fast food. Se door um, today, if I give you an example of right now, 
So this this doesn't happen all the time, but just now. So I got McDonald's for my sisters and brother. I was very hungry, and McDonald's is not pure curry meti. I kid you not, I did not eat a single fry. I got them the McDonald's. I had my food from home, and that's it. And they, I swear, my sister was like, "Kaise insaan ho tum? Matlab burger ko kaun mana karte?" Um, but this is something I, I don't know. I think I've developed. Um, even if I crave it, I'm like, I don't know. My it doesn't just appeal me that much. I'm more like home cooked. I think of these things. Yeah, at least मुझे पता है कैसे बन रही है. मुझे पता है कौन बना रहा है. मुझे पता है इसमें क्या चीज़ें डर रही हैं. So I think of this psychologically and I love it. Um, for the fitness, I I love I mean, obviously Karachi में नहीं, but in general I love hiking. Um, as I said, I'm a I'm from a village, so I'm used to um climbing mountains, hiking mountains just for walk as well. Because the the belly is in the center, and then surrounded by mountains. Even for the school, we used to walk for kilometers just to go to the school um, as teenagers. So that's something I deeply am passionate about. Whenever I see a mountain, I'm just like, if if there's a city and there's a mountain, you always find me in the mountain. Or <laughs> now I know where to find you in Islamabad. Islamabad, I lived there, so I used to hike everywhere, man. All the trails, Bruti, a lot of those hidden trails as well. Uh, I don't think I've left anything. जहाँ मुझे चांस मिल रहा था, जहाँ भी लग रहा था कि यहाँ रास्ता बन सकता है, we was we used to go there. Now I know where to find you in Islamabad. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Perfect. So t- tell me about this, Sikander. Did you ever imagine, you know, a kid from a village in Balochistan, you know, being to Monash University, you know, working with the government of Pakistan, being the curator for Global Shapers? having this perspective you know meeting so many people having so many amazing experiences and doing so much and creating an impact did you ever thought it's going to happen and if you right now if i were to tell you to think about it you know go back in the time you know what would you say to your younger self you know when funnily you know when i came to karachi that was in grade 7 and i went for o levels um i remember um Going for this teacher, who English ki teacher, so I was doing private O levels, and I was giving all five jo major exams in one go. So I gave um, Pakistan studies, Islamiyat, and uh, jo Urdu hai, that's in the first go, and the rest of the five in the second half of the same year. Um, so I was giving it privately, because I wasted a whole year. Um, idhar udhar gumta pirta. There's no school for me. But the is tarah ka literally I was not studying at all. Um, I remember going to this teacher. Um, ke mujhe English pada hai. So she. Um, told, so I found her number on Orkut when I messaged that English ki koi teacher hai. Someone messaged her number that English me ye teacher hai yahan pe padha rahi hai. So I contacted her. She said, "Bitta, aa jao mere yahan center. Let's see." So I went there. She gave me an essay. Okay, is pe essay likho. When I wrote this essay, she looked at it and she literally marked the whole thing with red. She's like, "Bitta, no way, no way. Aapko me three mahine me pass kara sakti." Okay. जो क्लास में ले रही हूँ the level is here mm. and there's this level that I can take them from to आपका level यहाँ पे है मैं आपको यहाँ से तो यहाँ ले जाऊँगी यहाँ से मैं आपको कैसे यहाँ तक ले जाऊँ um I don't know I was very disheartened I went home and I tried to figure out कोई और टीचर मिले I couldn't find anyone because they were literally दो से तीन महीने रहते थे एग्जाम्स में तो टीचर्स वुडन इवन टेक यू so I called her again I'm like ma'am I have come from Balochistan my family has come from Balochistan just for our education गिव मी अ चांस आप सिर्फ मुझे पढ़ाएं या जो आप उनको पढ़ा रही हैं आई विल ट्राई माई बेस्ट टू प्रूव कि मैं कर सकूँ सॉरेट फ्रॉम द्लास थर्टी लोगों को अलग पढ़ाती हैं हम लोगों को अलग असाइनमेंट देंगे सो जस्ट बिफोर द जो हमारा एग्जाम था दो हफ्ते पहले मोटिवेशनल स्पीच टू लाइक यस मिस विल डू इट लाइक बेटा तुम नहीं तुम मेरे घर आओगे टिल द लास्ट डे ऑफ द एग्जाम Wow. Wait, I have a lot to work on you still. So till the last day, she taught me, and I since she told me in the end that Sikandar got C. Tomorrow, I'll get that. That's an A star for me. Trust me, hmm. I got the C, and I called her I like, "Ma'am, I got the C." <laughs> She's like, "Sikandar, this is the happiest I am. Not on A stars, but on your C." Because I could never talk. Wow. And that day, I thought that if I struggle, I will do it. So if anyone can do it, I can do it. It is possible that it will take two hours. वो चीजें करने में मुझे दो दिन लगे बट विद द डिटरमिनेशन आई कैन डू इट आई आई एब्सोल्युटली लव दिस थैंक यू सो सो मच फॉर शेयरिंग दिस इट इट रियली यू नो दिस इज दिस इज रियली इंस्पायरिंग um so tell me about this in your opinion how can somebody be more self aware self aware is the big thing i think i'm still trying to figure out this 
uh, for myself as well. I try to do um, even the mindfulness exercises, the meditation, try to sit in the nature, um, try to read, try to just distract myself from every day and just take, a, take some time alone. But I think this is something um, I I've obviously I'm not an expert to give a tip on because I'm still learning. But I would say take some time off your busy schedule every now and then. Um, I'm still trying myself ki ye me karu from all the work that I do apart from my professional career. Um, I think it's very essential for each one of us ki hum kuch time nikalne um, and just without form, without anything, and just give it to ourselves. Just be present in that very moment. I think it's very essential. So I've taken a couple of workshops with the global shapers. Uh, with the international global shapers, the headquarters, they've given us some mindfulness sessions and they have been so powerful. They have literally relieved the entire stress and eight gunday. Um so I think this is very essential for each one of us to do, especially in these um troubled times, Jabam constantly job ka kya hoga, family ka kya hoga, zoom meeting, hai, wo meeting hai, wo karna hai, ye karna hai. there's a lot of things in our tiny head, in our tiny brain. So this brain needs a turn off sometime, a switch off karna. Hai. That's not achieved through sleeping, but that's achieved through this mindfulness, which I'm still trying to figure out. Wow, that's beautiful. I, I need to learn the whole thing from you. So maybe after this call, <laughs> we're going to have a <laughs> session. We we'll learn together then. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So together, now I have the final question for you. And that is one of the most exciting questions of this show. And that is if you had all the time in this world, if you had all the money in this world, and if you had yeah. all the energy in this world to do anything to keep yourself healthy, what would you do and why? To keep myself healthy? Yeah. Or just to do anything I want? To, to keep yourself healthy. That's the point. I think both of them would be the same answer. I would love to be someone who's a wildlife explorer. I'm crazy about wildlife. Um, and if I had all the money, if I didn't have to work, I didn't have to be here. I could be anywhere I want. I have all the time and energy. Um, you, I'll probably be in Sahara or um, uh, in Serengeti or somewhere. I'm um, studying animals, just rolling with them with my camera or with running and figuring out what do they do? What do they eat? How do they function? I'm curious about animal kingdom in general. Wow, this is amazing. So uh, good luck to, good luck for that. Um, together, what's the final thing that you want to leave the audience with tonight? Um, I would say there are no shortcuts. Don't try to run after shortcuts. Um, there have there will be a lot of times when you think hey, liya hai. This, this seems like the end of the world. Trust me, it's not. This this could be a time. So I'm gonna leave the audience with a thought that's still stuck in my head from that very same amazing English teacher. Just I think she has a very strong hand in shaping my personality. So unka ek, uh, jo final thought that before the exam, she's like, Beta, this is your English paper. And when you're thinking about this thing, this is the end of the world. There's no future for me. But trust me, when you go further along your career, nobody's going to bother about your English grade. Nobody's going to bother about your A-levels. When you do your master's, nobody's going to bother about your bachelor's. When you work, nobody's going to bother about your master's. So everything, we at some point will leave it in the past. People do not take out your past. People focus on what you are right now in your present. So keep moving forward. Don't hold yourself back with the past grudges. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. Second, that we've had some amazing question answers. I really loved our conversation. Thank you so much for your time. It's such a lively conversation. Thank you for um, being such an amazing host. And thank you for having me on the show, man. It means a lot. Thank you so much and have a nice day. Allah Hafiz. Me too. Bye-bye.